So we interviewed 100 hiring managers to find out what the most important skills for you to learn to get your job in DevOps are. And the number one answer is... No. No, that's not even... That's, that's just stupid. Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button from DevOps for Developers, where I'm here to teach you about the DevOps skills you need to get the DevOps job that you want. And I also actually provide a lot of really stupid jokes along the way. But that's not why you're here. That's just an added bonus. So the real reason that we're talking today is because I went through a bunch of ads online for DevOps engineers and aggregated all of the different skills that they are listing or asking for in those and totaled them up. And we're going to run through those skills and along the way, I'm going to tell you what each specific skill means, what they're really looking for when they list that skill. And then I'm going to give you some different um, interview styles or some interview questions of things that I ask and what I'm looking for whenever I'm interviewing someone for a DevOps role. And then the third thing I'm going to do is tell you how to level up your own skills if that's an area or a category where you don't meet the requirements. So let's jump into it. The first one, the most commonly listed skill in all of the DevOps ads that I looked at, you're probably not surprised, is CICD. So let's just talk about what that really means. What are they looking for there? You probably know that CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery, but that's great. What does it really mean? And so if we go back to like pre-DevOps, that's going to help you understand why this is so important because before DevOps, when the software engineering teams would package their software or get their software ready to release, they would package it up and then they would hand it off to IT and IT would, you know, let's be honest, I was in IT for a while, we would stare at it just with a blank stare for a really long time wondering what the hell this was. But eventually we would get it deployed. And so the whole thing there is that was all manual. You know, whenever the software engineering team packaged it up, they manualed it. The delivery to IT was manual. Unpacking it and delivering it onto the servers done by IT was manual. Restarting the services, if that was required, was manual. Checking to see if this thing even worked or not, that was manual. All of that stuff was done manually, which can be okay, but like the thing about doing things manually, is anytime you put humans in the mix, someone's gonna do it wrong. So you couldn't have this process go reliably time and time again because we've got humans in there that are gonna screw it up. So that's why CICD is important. And so if we look at what the company is really asking for in that job description or job requirement, they're looking for automation from the developer's workstation out to production, right? So the developer, finishes writing their code, how do we get that to production? That's gonna be different for every single company. Now granted, there are some things that are common to a lot of those practices, but the specific nuances of it are gonna be different for everyone. So don't think that you have to have the perfect answer for this. You just gotta understand like the key things that gotta happen along the way. Some of the things to understand along this process are understanding how the developers do their work. So they will check out code from a repo, they'll create a branch, and then they'll do their work in that branch, commit that branch back to the master branch, and then once it's committed to master or whatever branch name they use for production, that's when it's ready to be deployed to production. Now, some parts of that can be automated in some environments. They may choose not to automate that. The key thing for you to understand is that those are the steps to take place and those are the possible opportunities to inject automation. So when I'm interviewing candidates for this particular skill, what I'm looking for is that you understand how this works. So I'm going to ask you questions about Git to make sure that you know or have a good working understanding of what Git is like, you know, that you can check out a repository, that you create a branch, and then do your work in that branch, and then open a pull request to merge your changes back into the master branch. So again, I'm gonna require that you know what the master branch is, 
or know that there is a protected branch that represents the code that's suitable for production use. I'm also going to look for a little deeper understanding into some things called Git hooks. And I'm focusing a lot on Git here because it's kind of like the de facto standard these days. I mean, you could still be using SVN or some other version control system, but if you learn Git, you're going to be covered in a lot of scenarios. So when we're talking about Git, there's these things called Git hooks. And a Git hook is a way to inject yourself into a certain part of that process. For example, whenever a developer commits their code to their branch, there's a commit hook. And that's an opportunity for you to run something like a linter or the test automation suite to verify that the code is valid at that point or that it passes at that point. Same thing with when you open a pull request. There's another hook you can grab onto for opening a pull request and at that point you're going to want to run the test suite so that you know that all of the tests in that application are passing before someone, one of their peers, spends their time and effort uh, reviewing code that doesn't even pass the test. And then again, once that code is merged into master, there's another hook that you can grab there where you can either do the deploy automatically or signal that the code has been updated and there's a deploy ready to take place. Some of the other things I'm looking for when we're talking about that are not only that you know how or where to automate, but I'm gonna dig into some details that you actually know how to automate as well. And this can go a million different directions, right? Because when you're talking about CI/CD, you could be using something like Travis CI, or you could be using AWS DevOps or um, AWS Code Deploy is what it's called, or you could be using Jenkins. And as an applicant, I'm not gonna expect you to be familiar with all of those, but I would like to see you be able to talk with me about one of them because some of the, like the overarching principles are kind of the same. One of the other key things that I'm looking for here when you're doing automation is that you don't build silent automation, right? So whenever, what I'm talking about there is whenever you, whenever the pull request is merged into master and you trigger the deploy, um, I wanna see that you've done something in your automation to make sure that that deploy doesn't happen silently, that it notifies through whatever the primary communication tool for your team is. So that could be a message in a Slack chat room, it could be a message via Microsoft Teams, it could be an email. Some teams communicate best via email, but whatever the reason is, or whatever the tool is, that you know you need to send out a message so that everyone on the team knows that a deploy just happened. Something I might ask about, but I don't consider to be a requirement, is like automated um, testing once that deploy has happened. You know, because it's possible, like once you deploy to master, that you can run an automated test suite to simulate a user logging in and using your app and doing like a smoke test on it. So I'm gonna ask about that, but I don't really expect that to be something that you have intimate knowledge of, or I don't require that because it's not something that is done in every environment. But based on the other things that we've talked about, if you've demonstrated that you know how to tie into the Git hooks and you know how to work with your CI CD tool to automate things, um, that's just an added nice to have feature at the end of it that uses the same skills that we've already talked about. Talk about. Now, if you don't have those skills, if you haven't done any CI CD, how can you build those skills so that you do have something to talk about in the interview? And one of the ways you can do this is just open up your own AWS account. Now, if you're going to do that, I want you to be very, very careful because I don't want to see you go launch something in AWS and then get a $500 bill at the end of the month. So make sure that you set up a billing alert on there and that you're very careful about what you build and what you deploy. Uh, Microsoft Azure has another free tier similar to AWS, but if I understand correctly, there is a feature or a setting you can turn on in Azure so that it never exceeds a certain dollar amount. So you can't accidentally run up this, this large bill. The reason I recommend AWS over Azure is because AWS is more dominant in the whole cloud computing space. 
and working with that and learning AWS is going to help you with one of the other common skills we're gonna be talking about in the next video, which is AWS, because it's very frequently required in these job descriptions. But back to the topic, how do you build those skills? Launch something in AWS and you can use AWS Code Deploy or you can use GitHub Actions. If you use an open repo, you can use an open source repo. You can use Travis CI or Circle CI. Both of those have free tiers for publicly available repositories. So take some time just on your own to build and launch an application using CI CD. Now it doesn't really matter at this point what you build and deploy. I don't want you to go spend months learning how to write and build some application that you don't actually really care about because that's not the focus. There are hundreds of thousands of applications out there ranging from like full blown open source applications to simple to do apps that you can just download the code using from GitHub, build it and deploy it yourself, and then build it and deploy it manually, and then start asking yourself, oh, how can I automate this step? How can I automate that step? And work your way through the skills that you need until you can make a text change in that application, commit it back to your repo, and have that deployed out to your environment all through automation using CI CD. If you don't want to use AWS, one of the other things you can do is just deploy it to your own workstation, you know, and then you don't run the risk of running up a bill or have to set up an AWS account or something like that. Um, it's not going to be as translatable in real world skills, but it still gives you something to talk about when you go into that interview. Once you've done that, what's that going to give you? Well, it's going to give you exactly what the job interviewer or the interviewer is looking for when they're sitting down to talk with you. You're going to be able to talk about building an application, using the Git workflow, putting that through a CI CD system, and deploying it to production. And again, it doesn't really matter which CI CD system um, it is because they're all kind of the same and they're all kind of different. And if you happen to choose the one to learn, that's being used at the place that you're interviewing, that's great. If not, don't beat yourself up and think that you're out of the running because once you've learned one CI CD system, you can learn the rest of them just as easily. And that's just one of the things we do in DevOps. I call it just in time learning because you're never going to know everything and you're always going to be just kind of making things up on the fly as you go using those foundational skills that you've built throughout your career. Hope you found that helpful and, um, I'm going to cut this video off here and then go into the next video where we're going to talk about the next skill, the second most common skill called for in jobs, and that is AWS. So I'll see you there.